Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's April the 11th and we're looking at 1st Book of Samuel chapter 21. Um, <clears throat> in the first chapter, chapter 21, we notice that uh, David is supported by Ahimelech and Ahimelech is the priest of Nob and uh, Ahimelech is afraid when David comes down to see him and he wonders why have you come alone and no man with thee? And David said to Ahimelech, Well, the king has commanded me a business and has said to me, Do not tell anybody about it. He said, Look, give me five loaves of bread in my hand. And uh, the priest said, Well, we don't have any bread at all except for the bread that's holy, the bread that's in the tabernacle, the show bread. Um, and David said, well, um, that will be fine. And uh, the priest says, but before you have it, are the men that you're going to give it to holy? Have they kept themselves at least from women? And David said, well, yes, certainly they have kept themselves from women for at least three days. And so the priest was happy to give five loaves of bread to uh, David. This reminds us of somebody else who was given five loaves of bread with which he feed, fed the multitude. And uh, one of the servants of uh, Saul was there, uh, detained before the Lord, and his name was Diog, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdsmen that belonged to Saul. Um, <clears throat> and, and David said to Ahimelech, Is there not any weapons here, a spear or a sword? I haven't brought anything with me. And the priest said, well, there's the sword of Goliath here, the Philistine, who you killed in the valley of Elah. Behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take that, then take it. There's, no, there's none other save that here. And David said, there is none like it. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul. And he went to Achish, uh, king of Gath. And um, <clears throat> the people of Etchish, they knew all about um, they knew all about David, and they knew about this song, how the people sang that Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. So David laid up all these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Etchish, the king of Gath, and he changed his behaviour before them and pretended to be mad in their hands and scrambled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto the servants, Look, this is a madman. This is a madman. Why have you brought a madman into my house? And so David was able to depart and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone, listen to this, Every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became captain over them, and they were with him about four hundred men. So <laughs> we mustn't be afraid as Christians when people gather to us in churches with problems. It's the people with problems that need our help. And uh, David, at this particular time of his life, these people came to him. Why did they come to him? They came to him because they recognised here was a person that would accept them and here was a person that would help them. Now, when Saul heard that David was discovered uh, and the men that were with him, he sent down to Gibeah. Gib and uh, he said to the people, um, he said, why have you conspired against me? Uh, why, and uh, why have you done this? And Ahimelech answered the king and said, well, who is, who is more faithful than all, the, all your servants than David? He is the king's son-in-law and he goeth at thy bidding and is honourable in thine house. How can you conspire against somebody that is honourable? Um, and so um, the king said to uh, Ahimelech, he said, turn and kill all these uh, priests. And, uh, but, you know, the, 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 the servants were reluctant to do that. They didn't want to do that. 
And so uh, the king had to say to Diog, he said, kill all the priests. And he killed, he killed 85. Sad, isn't it? Um, and uh, David escaped, of course. And David said to Abathar later, I knew that day that I couldn't trust Diog the Edomite. He would surely tell Saul about my coming here. I knew it. I knew that he would do that. Um, he said, I have caused the death of all the persons of your father's house. That's Abathar. Abathar was the son of, of uh, Ahimelech. And he, but he, and he says, uh, he says, I want you to abide with me. Do not be afraid. He that seeketh my seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me, thou shalt be in safeguard. Now that's my password for today. Beautiful, beautiful phrase. Abide thou with me. Fear not, for he that seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me. Thou shalt be in safeguard. And then in chapter 23, the Philistines fight against Kalia and they rob the threshing floors. And David inquires of the Lord, says, shall I go up and smite the Philistines? And the Lord says to David, go and smite the Philistines. But David's men said to him, are you really sure? Uh, we, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more if we go to Kaliah against the armies of the Philistines? So David inquired of the Lord again, and the Lord said, Arise, go to Kaliah, I will deliver the Philistines into thy hands. One of the things that's a feature of David's life is this, is that he constantly inquired of the Lord. Yes, he listened to his men, but he put the, he put the counsel and the guidance of the Lord first. So David went up and he saved the inhabitants of Kalea. And it came to pass when Abathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Kalea, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And he was told, Saul, that David was come to Kalea. And Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand. He has shut him in by entering a, towel, a town that has gates and bars. You see. Um, and David said, to the Lord, he said, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Kaliah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kaliah deliver me up into their hands? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? And the Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. There's much debate. How did the Lord tell him? Well, how does anyone tell anyone anything? He told him straight into his ear. God spoke directly to David. Um, it says, And David and his men which were with him, six hundred arose and departed out of Kaliah. Now you'll notice in the last chapter it was four hundred. You see, there was this constant gravitational pull to David. Why? Why did they attach themselves to David? They attached themselves to David because he was a man after God's own heart. They attached himself to David because they trusted him, because they knew that God was with him. And they knew that when they were with David, they were with, with someone who would always inquire of the Lord about what to do next. This is something that every pastor should sit up and take note about. Uh, it says Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And Jonathan's son, uh, sorry, Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. That's a wonderful thing. You know, there must have been times when David was down about the whole situation. He was in a difficult position. He'd been anointed king, and yet he couldn't take the throne. There was this other, this other king upon the throne and then we come right way down to the end of the passage Saul and his men they compassed David and his men round about to take them and then there came a messenger to Saul saying quickly come on the Philistines have invaded the land and so poor Saul had to return from pursuing after David and uh, David went and dwelt in the strongholds at En Gedi
So lots of lessons in this passage. I really look forward to talking to you more about this tomorrow. And God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.